the upanishad series beyond the left and the right brain being is one non dual human brain is dualistic anything that it sees it distorts gives it its colors there is a particular aspect of hindu hindus shrimad bhagavat puran that part which narrates the stories of krishna in that a particular chapter comes in ras leela if you translate into a simple english language krishna dancing with milk maids on the bank of river yamuna portrayal of love it is misunderstood we have to understand it first who is narrating this portrayal it is 5 year old son of vedavyas 5 year old son of vedavyas naked subdev is narrating and who he is narrating to he is narrating to raja parikshit who was the descendant of pandav dynasty he is told that he has only 7 days to live in 7 days time his life will come to an end this is symbolic life is only of 7 days from birth to death that long span that we consider of 50 60 70 years is meaningless it is of 7 days another time i will explain krishna has invited all the milk maids to come and he will dance with them on the full moon night in the month of the winter sharat purnima sharat means winter purnima means full night and who are these gopis this is a mystical world go means light go means sense organs and p means the one who drinks the nectar overflowing through every sense organ the eyes the ears the nose the touch everything drinking that pristine wine the nectar krishna plays the flute is a message of silence echoes in the cosmos these milk maids they leave everything intoxicated by that clarion call they come out some of them are cleaning the house and as a part of cleaning they take the cow dung and and make a paste of it and smear it on the ground their hands are soaked in that paste some are kneading the flower so the face has the flower dusted and who are these gopis it happened during the time when the first incarnation happened in the form of ram and he was wandering it through the forest along with his consort sita so all these sages they got envious envy is a little better word envy is a positive aspect of jealousy not the negative jealousy is negative they felt i wish i could be wandering walking in the company of this manifestation ram came to know about this he said do not worry when i will assume the form as krishna then you all will be the milk maids you remember there is a feminine aspect and there is a masculine aspect we are identified by our physical appearances if you are feminine by the physical appearance you live 
those emotions. And if you are masculine by the physical appearances, you live that emotions. And it is very important to experience the, but we do not move to the emotional level to understand the beauty of the feminine emotions and the masculine emotions. This is what is the essence of meditation, experiencing the two emotions, experiencing the two emotions, the masculine and the feminine. They had experienced the masculine form of devotion in their incarnation as sages, but they were unfamiliar with the feminine aspect of devotion. So they were granted the boon that they will assume the form as they will be reborn as milkmaids. So these are the enlightened sages who in order to experience the feminine aspect of devotion they appeared during the time of Krishna. Krishna's flute is the clarion call, the message of silence that unites the masculine and the feminine aspects of the being. And he is dancing. Firstly, Krishna is the totality and as I mentioned, who is giving that description? That description of male-female relation, that Ras Leela, Ras means the, when you have the male and female energies dancing together, that aspect. And a five-year-old boy is giving a narration. Five-year-old boy symbolizes innocence, perennial, ultimate intelligence, the awakened one. So there is no sign of lust. And one who is listening he knew in seven days his life is going to come to an end. So neither of the two has any trace of lust in him. Only then you can understand the portrayal of love. Only when you transcend beyond the left and the right brain. There is another story that I had posted only in Hindi the other day. It happened after the Mahabharat war was over. The eldest of the Pandavas name was Yudhishthir. He asked Sage who among the male and female enjoys the relationship, the physical relationship. And in response to that, he narrates a story. Once there was a king, he was very kind, benevolent and generous. He did not have any children. So he arranged a particular ritual to have the children. And in that ritual, only the god of fire is worshipped. And the king of the gods, Indra, got angry because he was not invited and was not worshipped or respected during that process. He tried to take the revenge. Now he was ready, looking for an opportunity. And it happened that he saw him once the king was in the forest and he was thirsty. He created a river and as he drank the water from that river, his body started undergoing transformation from a male turned into a female. And he was very surprised what has happened to him. He is not a male anymore, instead his body is of the female. Disappointed, 
he thought what will happen to his hundred children who are born out of that act, sacrificial act. And so he went to the kingdom and he told his queen and to the children that now I have lost my masculinity. You all live. I will go to the forest and rest and spend rest of my life as a recluse. He goes to the forest and he lives there. He lives in the hut of an hermit as a female. There she gives birth to a few children. So first she brought out the children as a male, then as a female. And it happened that once again Indra came to test her. But before that he carried, she in the feminine form carried the children to the kingdom and he told that you all are my children. When I had the masculine form, and these are my sons through a feminine form, both of you live in harmony with one another and take care of the kingdom. Indra was not satisfied with that. So he tried to carry the news and create a conflict between the children. And the two started fighting among themselves. There was a bloody fight took place among them. And the children born out of her feminine form and the masculine form, some of them died. Indra again came to test her and said that I am very much pleased with your, which of your children you want to be alive. I can get your children alive once again. And she opted for the children that were born out of her feminine form. Then he asked her that I am so much pleased with you that I want you to want to restore your masculine form once again. The king in the feminine form said, Earlier I had known only one aspect, that is the masculine form. Now that I have known the feminine aspect as well, and I know the difference between the masculine aspect and the feminine aspect, I would like to retain my feminine form for the rest of the life. Feminine form is far more superior that is why devotee is considered to be feminine in nature. Devotion is feminine in nature. And the entire Sufism is based on that and the Bhakti movement. Everyone is the beloved of Krishna. This can come to you only when you understand the being is one, non-dual, human brain is dualistic. It is divided into two hemispheres, the left and the right, objective and subjective. Man remains settled between these two hemispheres. The world moves between these two it is just like a big ancient oak tree. It has the trunk undivided and then the tree divides into two main branches. The main bifurcation from which a thousand and one branches grow. The being is just like the trunk of a big tree, non dwelling and the mind is the first bifurcation out of which two different branches comes out. Mind is the first bifurcation 
where the tree divides it into two to become twin. Mind then becomes bilectic, thesis and antithesis, man and woman, yin and yang, day and night, God and devil, yoga and zen. All the dualities of the world are basically in the duality of the mind and below the duality is the oneness of the being. If you slip below, underneath the duality, you will find one that you can call as God, Nirvana, meditation or whatsoever you like. If you go higher through the duality, you come to many million-fold worlds. This is one of the most basic insights to be understood that mind is not one. Hence, whatsoever you see through the mind divides into. It is just like a white ray passing through the prism. It is immediately divided into seven colors and the rainbow is created because of reflection. Before it entered the prison, before the light entered the prison, it was one. Through the prison, it is divided and the white color disappears into seven colors of the rainbow. The world is a rainbow, the mind is a prison, and being is the white light. Modern research has come to a very significant fact. This is one of the most significant achievements of this century. It says that you do not have one mind. Instead, you have two minds. Your brain is divided into two hemispheres, the right and the left hemisphere. The right hemisphere is connected with the left side of the body and the left hemisphere is connected with the right side of the body. This is crosswise. The right hemisphere is intuitive, logic, illogical, irrational, poetic, Plutonic, imaginative, romantic, mythical, and religious. And the left hemisphere is logical, rational, mathematical, scientific, and calculative. These two hemispheres are constantly in conflict with one another. The basic politics of the world is within you. The greatest politics of the world is within you. And you may not be aware of it. You may not be aware of it. But once you become aware, the real thing to be done is somewhere between these two minds. The left hand is concerned with the right hemisphere, which is the seat of imagination, myth, poetry, religion and intuition. And the left hand is very much con con and the left hand is very much condemned. The society is of those who are right-handed. This means living within the left hemisphere. 10% of the children are born left-handed, but they are forced to be right-handed. Children who are born left-handed are basically irrational, intuitive, non-mathematical, and non-Euclidean. They are dangerous for society, so the society forces them in every possible way to become right-handed. And it is always discouraged when you are using the left hand. It is not just a question of hands, it is a question of inner politics. The right-handed, the left-handed children functions through the right hemisphere. When you are using 
the left side of the body more and in most of the cases the left side of the body is weaker than the right side. So we are more logical. If you just go and look at the human body, the medical science will explain that the left side of the body is weaker than the right. The left-handed children, child functions through the right hemisphere and society cannot allow, it is dangerous. So it has to be stopped before things go too far. It is suspected that in the beginning that the proportion must have been 50-50. However, the right-handed has ruled so long that by and by the proportion has fallen to 10% and 90%. It is, this is a trick to change you to be a right-handed. Because once you become right-handed, your left hemisphere starts functioning and gets activated. The left hemisphere is reasoning. Right hemisphere is beyond the reason. So man lives by reason. It becomes difficult for him to trust the unknown and unknowable when it comes because their logic fails. The left-handed minority is the most oppressed minority in the world, even more than certain communities. If you understand this division, you will understand many things. Go to the primitive people, they are more intuitive. The poorer the person, the less intellectual and that may be the cause of being poor. Because he is less intellectual, he cannot compete in the outer world your so-called world of intelligence. He is less articulate as far as language is concerned, reason is concerned, calculation is concerned. He is almost a fool as far as the worldly life is concerned. That may be the cause that he is poor. The rich man functions through the left hemisphere he is more calculative in everything. Not only is that he is very cunning, clever and logical too. That may be the reason that he is rich. Women are right hemisphere people. Men are left hemisphere, ruled by the left hemisphere. But men Men have ruled the women for centuries. Now a few women are revolting. But the amazing thing is that these are the same type of women who are operating through their left hemisphere. In fact, they are argumentative just like men, rational, and they have the logic of Aristotle. It is possible that one day, just as the communist revolution has succeeded in Russia and China, somewhere, maybe in America, women can succeed and overthrow men. But by the time the woman succeeds, the woman will no longer be woman. Instead, woman will have become a left hemisphere. That is why I go on emphasizing on women to maintain their femininity so that they can continue to operate through their intuition, through their femininity and that is far more superior. I have practiced to experience the feminine aspect of the being and meditation balances and for that I have devised my own methods so that I use my both sides of the brain and whatsoever comes out, comes out of the harmony. 
Instead, women will have become the left hemisphere because to fight one has to be calculative and to fight with men you have to be men like aggressive in your appearance, in your mannerism, in your ways and means and you lose your femininity, the most beautiful aspect of your being. That very aggressiveness is shown all over the world in women's liberation. Women who has become part of that liberation movement are very aggressive like men. They are losing all grace, all that comes out of intuition. Because if you have to fight with men, you have to fight with the same technique. Fighting with anybody is not only aggressive, instead very dangerous because you become just like your enemy. That is one of the greatest problems of humanity. Once you fight with somebody, by and by you have to use the same technique and the same way. Then the enemy may be defeated, but by the time he is defeated, you have become your own enemy. The conflict is in man. Unless it is resolved there, it cannot be resolved anywhere else. All conflict, all pain, first and the foremost place where you have to resolve it is your mind. And the moment you are able to resolve it within your mind, then you find no conflict exists outside. Whenever two people are on conflict, I have to resolve this issue within my mind first. And the moment I have resolved is within my mind, outside resolves by itself. The conflict is in you, in your mind. Unless it is resolved there, it cannot be resolved anywhere else. Those who try to resolve, is, resolve the conflict in the outer world are mistaken. The politics is within you. It is between these two parts of the mind. A very small bridge exists. If that bridge is broken through some accident, through some psychological defeat or something else, the person becomes a split, the person becomes too schizophrenic. This is the phenomena of schizophrenia or a split personality that happens. Then you become two, you behave like two persons. In the morning you are very loving, very beautiful. In the evening you are very angry, absolutely different. You look at your behavior on a day-to-day -day basis. You do not remember your morning. How can you remember? Another mind was functioning in the morning and the person becomes two. If this bridge is strengthened so much that the two minds disappear as two and become one, then integration or crystallization happens. What George Gurdjieff used to call the crystallization of the being is nothing but these two minds coming together, meeting of the male and the female within. The merger of yin and yang, the meeting of the left and the right side of the brain, or the meeting of logic and illogic. If you can understand this basic division in your tree of consciousness, then you can understand all the conflict that goes on around and inside you. Meditation becomes that bridge. It is not sitting for one hour or doing this. 
it is trying to create the bridge between the two hemispheres of the brain, the left and the right. And this has been beautifully symbolized in Hindu mythology as Ardhanarishwar, the form of Shiva, where he is depicted half male and half female, means the two hemispheres have merged into one another. The objective and the subjective mind are no more separated from one another. Instead, there is a strong bridge that exists between the two. And that is, such a person can attain to bliss or a life of harmony. This is the beginning of a life of the beyondness. Why is Buddha so blissful? Why is Jesus under all circumstances exhibits his love and compassion? Because the two hemispheres are one. This is not the goal. This is the beginning of the journey. Let us attain to this crystallization. My effort is in every possible way, I keep on coming in circles to explain the same thing in different languages, different examples, but objective is one, to bring crystallization of your consciousness, the harmony between two hemispheres, until this Harmony is the essence of the human existence. Harmony between left and the right side hemispheres of the brain. Remember the connection between the body and the brain hemispheres is crosswise. Left hemisphere is governed by the right brain, right side of the body. So if you want to bring about a change in the left hemisphere, use the right brain, right side of the body more, strengthen it, use it more and more. If you want the opposite, then use the left hand, left side of the body, and you will find that the left side of the body starts becoming stronger and stronger. And when it balances, there happens an inner balance also between the left and the right hemispheres of the brain. And that is where the crystallization of the consciousness happens. You are one within, no more duality. And this oneness within is the beginning of a new journey, beginning a new 